Greetings everyone in the spirit of Road to Rock. Welcome to our discussion titled, His Excellence, Men in Purpose and Service. This is an initiative of the Road to Rock Club of Stockbrook. Our club was chartered on July 29, 2016. We've had community outreaches across Guyana, including Araraimo, Burby Servo, and Dredge Creek in Essequibo. Our professional development work has included sessions on mental health and conflict resolution. My name is Christian MacDonald. I am the Assistant Secretary of the Rotara Club of Stabrook. I am a customer service representative and I am a content creator. And I will be a moderator for this session. On November 19th every year, we celebrate International Men's Day. And today, we are honored to have three distinguished gentlemen who have dedicated their lives to service and the betterment of their country. First, we have Mr. Delroy Carrington. Past president of the Rotary Club of Stabrook, he is a software development and business analyst. Next, we have the past president of the Rotary Club of Georgetown, Dr. Andrew, sorry, the Rotary Club of Georgetown Central, Dr. Andrew Boyle. He is an author, microbiologist, and founder of, and founder and CEO of the Eureka Medical Laboratories. Lastly, we have Mr. Will Campbell, sitting beside Dr. Boyle. He is a, psychologi a psychological consultant sorry, and founder of Solutions Training Consultancy and Counseling Services. Welcome gentlemen and thank you for being a part of today's discussion. Thank you very thank much. You. So the first question, how would you describe your journey in your professional life and how are you able to achieve this level of success thus far? Anyone? Oh, I can go first, you should. Or yes, you go first. Certainly you go first. <laughs> All right, no. All right. Uh, you're the big one, I think you should go first. Go ahead. Okay. All right, thank you, Dr. <laughs> Boyle. Um, my success, and I, I say that because success is relative to each and every individual, um, but for, uh, firstly, I must attribute that to um, what I would conceive um, the village. And when I say the village, is the support system that... I was privileged to be part of in terms of my parenting, the parenting that I receive, and also the people around me that um, instilled in me uh, certain disciplines in terms of uh, commitment mm -hmm. and also dedication to um, whatever you want to uh, be part of. And I say that to say the village because there were so many persons involved in, in that process, whether your parents, um, aunts, teachers, and so forth, that certainly would have spent time in molding the person you see today. Thank you so much. Good. All right, for a second. Um, thanks, Christian. Um, uh, certainly, thanks for this opportunity, and it's a great honor to be here. Uh, yeah, I would say first one word, um, persistence, uh, one, but I would certainly like to credit the support from from the Almighty. He's been really, really supporting over, over those many years. And uh, secondly, of course, my family members and uh, um, like you know, family members. We have also my team members. They have mm -hmm. been supported. In fact, I get the kudos and they do all the hard work. But indeed, indeed, um, it has a lot to do with, with being persistent and and. I think being relentless in the pursuit of one's dream, uh, and that's that's so important. And um, I will say I've, I'm I'm successful, but I've I've, I've not arrived as yet. But you know, certainly, uh, I'm happy to give kudos to those who who helped me along the way. Thank you so much, for that. I, so similarly, I, um, I I I'm not sure I believe in the concept of the self-made man because I feel like all of us have um, a team of people that help us to get where we are. Um, so I have to give credit to the village, but I also, uh, probably more importantly so, I must give credit to God because um, this is not where I saw myself, you know, initially. I had other dreams mm -hmm. and somehow uh, life tended to point me in different directions until eventually I got to a point where I realized that this is what I was born for. So, um, you know, it's, it's the people you've surrounded yourself with, you know, 
Um, and, and someone mentioned parenting. And for me, parenting is more than just my biological parents. There are so many other persons who've been parent figures mm -hmm. in my life. And, and uh, then there is the support system. And then there are people even now who continue to encourage me. Because I mean, I'm, I'm sure uh, I'm, I'm not alone when I say there are those mornings when you get up and you ask yourself, is it worth it? Exactly. And then there are those people who would continue to urge you on and, and encourage you. And so those are some of the factors that have contributed to um, helping me get where I am today. I like that you all mentioned the village. And I strongly agree because, I mean, I'm not nearly as successful as you three, <laughs> But I know for me personally, in things that I would have achieved, you know, my CSEC qualifications and other things I would have done, my family, that being my village, as well as my friends, they would have been there for me a lot. And I know especially during the quarantine, you know, but everything that would have happened, they really helped keep me grounded. So mm -hmm. I agree. And God, of course, oh, yes. Oh, yes. God oh, is yes. oh, yes. the backbone of it all. Yeah. So I agree. Thank you for your responses. So my next question would be, we were molded in part by society. In our society, there are certain expectations on boys and men. What do you think some of these expectations are? Anyone's free to answer? I'm going to go first so that the guys don't <laughs> come up with my answers. <laughs> I, uh, I, I think that um, society expects us as men to be strong. And um, I have had to redefine strength for myself. Maybe we'll talk about that a little later on. Mm -hmm. But I've had to redefine strength because I think that it is one of those expectations that are unrealistic. Mm -hmm. So we're supposed to be strong and stoic all the time. We're not supposed to have emotions. We're supposed to be providers. We're supposed to be problem solvers. We're supposed to be fixers. Um, and, and men are expected to be successful, period. That is true. Um, and success is relative, but society has a, a, a standard that it has set. And it puts us as men, I believe, under a lot of pressure mm -hmm. to achieve certain things and to achieve it by a certain time and in a certain way. And uh, so. Yeah, those are some of the expectations, I believe. I strongly agree, especially with the time constraint that's put on us. Yeah, I mean, I'm 21, and I feel like I haven't achieved and, that and, much. And half of that is because of the pressure society puts on us. And if, if, if I may continue for half mm. a minute. Um, if at 21, mm. you know, people ask you, what are you doing? And you say, well, uh, I'm studying, I'm going to school right now. Mm. Generally, the response is like, meh. If, if a woman says that, she is congratulated. Exactly. You're doing something with your life, but for a man, you you're still going to school. Yeah, yeah. I'd like to agree. Um, there's this expectation that we should be stoic, strong, um, not show any emotions, and by that whole construct, even the way we speak to, even before the man, a male, is that from very early on, there's always you can't cry, no emotions, and so forth. So it's expected of you that you should behave in that manner. Even when you are, you're not feeling well. Mm -hmm. And for when you become the man, even when you're, you're sick, and we will talk about some of these things probably, um, that is why you find it very difficult for a man to say, I am sick. Whether um, mentally drained or physically, and then to accept that I need to go uh, visit the health institution and so forth. There's always this assertion that you need to be strong, mm -hmm. not showing any emotions and so forth. Um, even in the midst of all the chaos or anxiety that you feel, um, I'm not supposed to express it. And, and this can be um, loads that you, you take on that it's not released. Mm -hmm. And you, you live your life with that, that perception or construct. Yeah, yeah. In fact, I, I share those views. Uh, this is a very uh, learned uh, gentleman. There's a there's a saying that says, um, "Big men don't cry," mm -hmm. and, and and that's that's so serious. It's a silly, mm -hmm. silly statement. Mm -hmm. Men are expected to to be strong. Men are expected to solve problems, and this can lead to the things like, uh, in fact, things like domestic violence. Uh, and we abuse. do see that suicide 
I mean, touching on, on some of your topic there. But indeed, they, mm -hmm. they, 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 we are we are put by society, put under pressure by, by society, mm -hmm. and this this needs to be looked at um, very very carefully. And in fact, this is one reason why we're here, I guess. You see, mm -hmm. the thing is, men we don't discuss our feelings either, which is why panels and discussions yeah. like these are important. Because even in my family, we don't talk about this as men. Mm -hmm. And these are things that need to be spoken about because men do face issues as well. It's just that we're so good at hiding it, we're so good at covering it up, but it doesn't mean that they don't exist. Mm -hmm. So I think talking about it definitely oh, yes. is a good start. Yeah, and, and just to touch on that, uh, we, we spoke a lot about being strong and so forth and emotions. Um, even within, sometimes even within your family as a, as a male, mm -hmm. if you're reflecting it, you, you ask yourself, how many times have I sh truly shown emotion to, let's say, your children? Because and this will affect the way that they're brought up mm -hmm. in terms of just um, hugging them. Mm -hmm. You may hug your daughter, but your, your son, you may just uh, <coughs> fist yeah. bump or so forth, but just giving him mm -hmm. a general embrace, him or her, well, him, mm -hmm. a general embrace to show that it's okay to, to show to love and affection. Quite right. Yep. Thank you so much for those responses. Okay, so moving to our next question. Apart from your professional lives, you are husbands, you are fathers. Let's talk about fatherhood. I mean, we started talking about that a bit just now. But how do you believe fatherhood has changed from when you were a child to now being a father yourself? Yeah, if I may go first to this time around. So. <laughs> you, 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 <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> fatherhood is it's a very, very uh, important, you know, part of, of, of family life. I would like to see um, over the years I'm talking here I've raised uh, three wonderful t children and I think I've done relatively well or we have done relatively well as, as, as parents. Fatherhood has changed a lot. Um, if I can give you one example um, I, I suffered a lot um, by um, not um, sparing the rod, the, the, my parents not sparing the rod. Um, and that uh, corporal punishment is not something that that is being practiced now. But it's being it's, it's being frowned upon. Uh, it's that has changed drastically in my my opinion. Not that I'm I am for mm. or against. In fact, I'm against it. But it's of course is something we can debate or oh, whether it's it's um, the right way to go or not. That's something that's debatable. But yes, fatherhood has changed over over over, over the years and, and drastically too. Um, but, but that's another story we have to talk about because you can have you can look at the ramifications of changing um, fatherhood over the years and so on. So. Yeah. I think I, I, I get where you're coming from because mm -hmm. you're still looking at the disciplinary aspect. Exactly. And I grew up, well, I, I don't want to say corporal punishment exactly, but you know, young Guyanese men, you know, you, you do something wrong, your parents put two thumbs behind your head or whatever it is. But um, I don't fully agree with that as well it is debatable but i get where you're coming from in terms of still having discipline exactly. so I, I i understand what about you yeah you the, the question you asked in terms of how fatherhood has changed my life and i reflect i, I now reflect on it um there's a period in in my life or most persons life where they will say uh sequentially this is what they will do mm -hmm. and it's a lot about them and from the moment I became a father, or generally, I, I guess, that you become a father, you recognize that your life is not just about you. Mm -hmm. um, and there's this realization, um, and I, I, I always usually try to use a comparison. There's this one moment I was driving, and I was not fo fully focused, and I... The, the scenario played to me if something were to happen to me how the life of my children and generally my family would be affected and it creates a whole new way of or perspective in your life that you need to do certain things to ensure that their lives mm -hmm. they have the best life that they can possibly have with you there kind of being the guiding and mentorship factor for them I think in some ways we've moved away from where the father was more present. Mm -hmm. um, 
that is debatable. <laughs> but I think that um, we, we, you know, so when I was growing up, the, 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 the village mm -hmm. helped to raise the child, and, and now we've become more individualist. Um, and so you're responsible for raising your children. Um, so there is that shift in, in, in societal support for mm -hmm. child rearing. Um, it's one way in which fatherhood has changed, I believe. Another change that has come about in society is that our children, children now are a lot more well-informed. Yeah. People think that children are more intelligent. I would argue that they're more well-informed. Mm -hmm. And so they have all of this information, and uh, in their minds they feel like they're smarter than their parents, and, 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 and so parents have to deal with that. Then there is the fact that children, uh, or children now are more connected with the world. You know, I tell people all the time, you give your child a phone, that phone, that child is now directly connected with at least seven billion people. Mm -hmm. And um, so we have to compete with that. Um, and we're now expected to provide more consumer goods, and mm -hmm. so we've become a lot busier. Um, now, on top of all that, um, society has become more aware now that fathers should be more intimately involved in the raising of the children. So you're expected to bring in all these, to go out and get it, as, as some people might say. But you're expected to also be there and be present and, and participate and change diapers and attend mm -hmm. PTA meetings. And so all of these things, um, and, and, and rightly so, you know. But, you know, those are some of the, the ways in which I've seen um, fatherhood change from the time when, from the time I was being fathered mm -hmm. to know that I'm a father. I like that you mentioned that the children are more well, in, well informed but not exactly more intelligent because as a resident Gen Z, you know, a child who grew up within the 2000s, I was one of those more well informed but not so much intelligent children. So I would always clash with my parents, especially my father because we would have these strong personalities. Mm -hmm. And I would always be like, no, it's this way. I've heard about it being this way. But then I was informed by somebody who I don't even know that it's this way. But my father would then have to break down and be like, okay, it may be this way in one part of the world, maybe this way somewhere else. But that doesn't necessarily mean that it's right. It doesn't necessarily mean that it ties into our society. Right, and his, his experience would allow him to break it down and, and bring perspective. Exactly. Uh, you know, so and and essentially that's the difference. I'm 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 on a bit of a different topic right now, mm. but one of the things about uh, ch well-informed children mm. is that sometimes parents are intimidated by that. That's true. Sometimes parents are intimidated by the fact oh, that yes. my child has more knowledge than yeah. I do, and they forget that they have more experience yeah. than that child, and it's the experience that sets um, an adult apart from yep. a child. But there's also there's also a perception. That you're smarter than your, than your parents because something they've gone through as well said they've gone through the experience of course mm -hmm. so it's a perception yeah. and even the youngsters now think they're as smart as you are but you've been through all those things before. I mean I think I, I remember I remember thinking that I was smarter than my parents. Sometimes you I know, still it's, I, I think <laughs> it's, it's a part of the, the it's a part process, of the yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah but I, I'd like to add also there is with human interaction especially in the home with children. It's always a learning experience. There's mm -hmm. thing, yeah. There are things that, well, they're, they're generally learning from you, adopting and mimicking yes. and imitating you. But certainly, if you were to step back and observe them, there's so much that you learn. Uh, I'll just give an example. I, re I recall one time, my son was taking, his, he was three at a time, and he was taking the bike out of the, the downstairs. Mm. And in my estimation, I said that he could not get past because it, it's locked off with the cars. And because we generally take a particular path to get out. And he just jumped on the bike and he rode out and he took a different path and maneuvered his way. And I was like, I never <laughs> looked at this thing from this perspective. Yeah. And it's smart. <laughs> yeah, and it, the, you, you, you certainly can learn right. from them. And it's right. also you need to just have that conversation, mm -hmm. constantly be having that conversation with them, or you know, conversations. It, it takes a measure of humility and mm -hmm. confidence mm -hmm. to be able to, to, to allow yourself mm -hmm. to learn from your children. Right. Humility because um, in that mm -hmm. moment, that child is a teacher and you're the student. Mm -hmm. And uh, confidence in the sense that 
you are strong enough to acknowledge that mm -hmm. I didn't know this before, I hadn't seen this perspective before. Um, but it, it, it really works and I think it helps to build relationship when, a, when, a, when, a, when a father can say to a child, you know what, yeah. I didn't know this before, mm -hmm. thank you for teaching this to me, and still maintain his, his authority as yes. the father. Let's say something's wrong with your cell phone. And then oh, 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 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> They'll fix it to you for you. Certainly, you certainly in that minutes. domain, you Two usually minutes. have to accept that yeah. they can get it solved. They're right? the experts. Yeah, right. that's me and my grandfather a lot because he would usually come to me with a cell phone and be like, I did not, I didn't notice. Yeah. And he challenges me a lot, but I'm glad that in those situations, he allows me to actually teach him stuff because right. he's usually the one teaching me. Right. But right. Like but, but, but something that we spoke about, that expectation, like you said, it's usually expectation that as a, as a male you should know. Right. Mm -hmm. But yeah. you have to have some humility to yeah. accept that there are certain you things. Don't know. things don't know. And there are a lot of things that we don't oh, know. Yes, you have yes. to accept it and that you can learn from the home. Correct. Yeah. Okay, so I'm really enjoying the discussion that we're having so far. The next set of questions that we have were submitted by some of the young men within our club, within Rose Rock of Stafford. And I will um, direct the questions to yeah. each of you specifically, but other members are free to answer as well. So the first question is for Dr. Boyle. From your experience, what are some of the biggest health challenges that men face that they need to give attention to? Okay, we, we touched on something like that earlier. and. Um, Christian, um, I'm sure you have a car. If you don't, I'm sure you're aspiring to have one very soon. I, I am. But as soon as you have a car, you make sure that it's serviced every three months or every uh, certain amount of miles. Uh, it's all, you service your car. Mm -hmm. We men, I don't know what's happening. We have to wait, wait until we're falling down before we go to visit the doctor. Again, trying to have that, that sort of macho appearance. Oh, I'm not mm -hmm. sick. In fact, in fact, I had a discussion with, with a young man not so long ago. I said, your dad is, is he was very sick, right? Mm -hmm. I said, why didn't you take him to the doctor? He said, oh, and he was bragging. My dad is 75 years old and he's, ne he's, not, he's never sick and he's never been to a doctor before. Mm -hmm. Every nonsense like that. It's, and he it, thinks that's something good. That's great. something good. Mm -hmm. So again, we have to look, uh, we have to, not we all get rid of this sort of machoism we have. Mm -hmm. It's okay, we're big and bad, and, 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 and we need to take care of ourselves. The first thing we need to take care of ourselves, do regular checks, not because I have a medical um, um, facility, but I'm saying to, to not you go to elsewhere as well. Have regular checks, things like prostate cancer, mm -hmm. you can detect diabetes and all, you can detect them early. Yep. And, and, and take uh, evasive steps to prevent it from, from going forward. So indeed, we have to get out of that mindset that we are so big and bad mm -hmm. and, 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 and look after ourselves. And the thing is, I usually think that that mindset is a generational something. It is, yes, yes. But even I have that mindset sometimes. Like I would have a cold and I would tell myself that you don't have a cold. You're not sick. You can keep going. And I don't know if it's the macho-ness or the wanting to see macho, but that's just the mindset that I have. So it is something that I'm working on. So No, it's good yeah. to be positive. Mm -hmm. We need to be positive and say, look, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm good, I'm, I'm feeling. But at the same time, you need to have your regular check, just like yeah. your car. Every three months, every year, once a year, those kind mm -hmm. of things. Definitely. Okay, so the next question is to P.P. Delroy. Information communication technology is an exciting yet demanding field. What stressors do you believe men, including those in the sector, face, and how could it be addressed? Uh, stressors. Um, I think in in the field it, it calls for a lot of dedication and focus, and they have there are so many conflicting requirements of you. Um, providing for your family when I when I speak about providing in terms of time mm. um, resources and so forth and it it requires focus to resolve issues or to create or innovate and at times you find yourself with the push-pull factor I need to spend this, this the time here mm. and also here 
how do I balance it? And you need to, there is this concept, compartmentalize in terms of chunking out your day to say, I'm going to spend this amount of time here and this amount of time here and try to create that balance, mm -hmm. basically. Um, the other the other thing is um, finding time for self. Mm -hmm. For you to be an innovator, creator, you need to find time with yourself, understand yourself, um, create goals and create directions and, and kind of chart a direction. So yes, those are stressors, but also it's, it's a way um, to deal with the stress, you creating your space mm -hmm. and time. And I think even all the members of the panel would agree because finding a work-life balance is important. Oh, yes. You need to be able to balance both of them. Oh, yes. And you also do need to make time for yourself. Even as a young person, it's something that I agree with because it can be on the go all the time. Mm -hmm. You need to have that time to relax. Mm -hmm. You need to have time to spend with your friends. And you also need to have time for work because that's important. Yeah, let me let me just add, add this, and I'm sure that you guys have this as well. Um, just as we you you have time to spend with family, um, friends, and so forth, it's always important. Um, I, I don't do it as much now, but at one point, my wife, when we we just got married, she understood that once a month I will take a time out just to go somewhere, and have go to a restaurant and have a meal just by myself. <laughs> And it, it, it does so much, it's almost like a reset. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. uh, on the other hand, mm -hmm. you can't spend too much time with self, too, because <laughs> you, know, you, know, you have to bring in the box as well. Huh? That is true. But it's not that bad. It's of course, bad. of course, yeah, yeah, totally. It. So the next question is to Mr. Campbell. So it goes, are there mental health concerns that are more prevalent among men? And how can we ensure that they receive the necessary support? All right, that's a that's a great question, an important question, and um, my response is is kind of going to touch on what was said before about um, challenges that men experience. So there are some mental health uh, mental disorders mm -hmm. that men tend to experience more than women. So, for example. Um, about nine out of ten persons experiencing schizophrenia and other psychotic disorders are men. So, um, and, and, and there are several factors that contribute to that, and the biggest one I believe is lifestyle and societal pressure. So, uh, let me see if I can explain that without taking over the... the <laughs> so, we grow up believing, having been taught by society, that we're not supposed to express what we're feeling. Mm -hmm. And so we carry those things bottled up inside all the time. And eventually, all of those unresolved issues, those untalked about challenges and hurts and emotions, they, they either cause us to explode mm -hmm. or implode. Um, so, so there is that. And then there is the, the, the pressure to provide. And so we're going and going, and we become kind of unidirectional. Mm -hmm. And you hear people saying things like, you know, this, this man studied too much and he ran off. Right. But it's not because he studied too much, it's because he didn't, sure. uh, he, he wasn't able to take care of those other uh, faculties of his being. Mm -hmm. So we don't take care of ourselves um, physically, we don't take care of ourselves emotionally. In fact, we're not even supposed to have emotions. Yeah. We, we very often don't take care of ourselves socially, we're, we're busy providing. And so as a result of that, all of these stressors pile up. And, and over time, they, you know, take a toll on our mental health. Mm -hmm. So, um, suicide is, you know, more, more men die by suicide than women. Um, there are all kinds of factors that explain that. And one is that men tend to be more lethal in their efforts. Their methods tend to be more lethal. Um, now, there, there, is a, there, there is a statistic that the jury is out on. So more, more women report experiencing depression mm -hmm. and anxiety. But we, want, we, we, we still don't know whether it's because women are more likely to talk about it That's true. than men. There are lots of, of men, lots of men, 
walking around feeling depressed. But I mean, you can't go up to your boys and say, I feel real depressed. Yeah. <laughs> That's not a conversation <laughs> that men have, you know. Yeah. So, so the man doesn't, he, he doesn't acknowledge it. Mm. He doesn't say it to himself. In fact, a lot of us feel like, you know, we normalize it. It just feels like it's just another day. Mm -hmm. you know, I don't feel like working today. Maybe I'm tired. Mm -hmm. But it could be that, that I'm depressed. Um, I want to cry, but I can't explain that to anybody. I can't, I can't share that with anybody. I just suck it up like a man and move on. And I push through life and I find ways to divert my attention so that I don't entertain this feeling. Mm -hmm. So uh, men generally experience more mental health issues, more mental health challenges than women. Mm -hmm. And the use of alcohol and uh, drugs mm -hmm. and all those things to self-medicate, to the effect. Mm -hmm. That's right. I remember, I think it was a few weeks back when I heard about, um, I don't know if you guys know, but the actor Matthew Perry from Friends, yes. he played Chandler, mm -hmm. he had committed suicide. Yeah. And I remember thinking, but this man is, he seems so happy, he's always mm -hmm. smiling. But then he wrote a note and then he explained everything that would have been happening leading up to that suicide. And it ties back to what you were saying. We do experience mental health issues, but we don't talk about them. People like happy people. People mm -hmm. want to be around happy people. So if I don't feel happy, I pretend to be happy so mm -hmm. that I, you know, the people don't withdraw themselves from me. Okay. Exactly. And then I think for him too, he was a comedian. So mm -hmm. he I felt as though he had to present right. that. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So the next question is for Dr. Boyle. Mm -hmm. You recently published your riveting book titled Aspire, Dare to Dream. Can you tell us what inspired you to pursue this spellbinding portrayal of your life's journey and where can we access your book? Excellent. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, <laughs> I certainly got to answer that question. Uh, Christian, um, several years ago, uh, I was very close to uh, a brother who is now deceased uh, three years ago. Um, it was my real brother, in fact. You know, we, we did everything together. We were on the Burbage River, where, where I'm from. Mm. Uh, we were there. Um, riding jet ski and after we stopped he said bro we live in a good life you know we should document this mm -hmm. and I, I took him seriously and I started writing it was seven years ago I started writing so because the the how, how my life started really the, the whole journey it's not not a regular um, regular Formal like, like you were guys are accustomed mm. to things like you used to paddle to go to school, milk cows in the morning, it's a whole set of things. All of wow. and in fact, walk with shoes or something so totally new. In fact, in the, in the uh, I mean, just touching this, um, the guys char uh, tease me for dodging James Bond's bullet because uh, first time in the cinema at around 11, we watched the movie, we were watching the movie, mm. James Bond came off to the water and shot towards me and I dropped to the floor and said, <laughs> oh, say, oh God, I'm dead. So that's, <laughs> so that's exactly mm -hmm. those words. Uh -huh. So again, it's uh, riveting as, as um, uh, some people describe. In fact, on, on Amazon, um, someone described it as a must read. Uh -huh. uh, but the whole idea of writing the story, is just to, to get it out there, of course, uh -huh. but really to influence youngsters, to influence youngsters say, look, as I said earlier, I'm not, I have not arrived, but I've achieved a lot. I want to say to those youngsters, listen, this guy came from humble circumstances. Mm -hmm. Maybe I can do the same. So there's a whole idea. So it's available on <laughs> Amazon, it's available on uh, Barnes & Noble, it's available at local as well. As well. Um, Austin's Bookstore, New Era Bookstore, all those. Um, so it's available. So. Well, you've heard it here yeah. first. So, I'm definitely yeah. going to give myself a copy. <laughs> what I'm going to do as well, I would like to share a copy with you so that you can share with your with your um, fellow Rotoraptors. I appreciate um, that. Because I've done this with, with my old school and um, my Barbie schools. Mm. And I've shared with them and, and I, uh, from time to time they asked me to talk about it because mm. they would have read the stories and want to hear from me directly. So I've done that. In fact, I've done it as far as in Barbados recently. Wow. And I'm due to do that in, in um, Georgia at some point. Definitely so, have to read this book. I definitely will give you a copy. <laughs> so I have a copy right here. So here. Oh, oh yes. Okay. Yes. Okay, so the next question is to Mr. Combo. What inspired you to create Solutions Training Consultancy and Counseling Services? And how can we access these services? 
Okay, let me start by saying that um, I, I was just inspired to write a book. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it, it might not be as riveting because I didn't paddle to go to school, but, but um, I, I can relate, I believe, to some of the experiences. Um, so I, I've been a teacher all my life, all my uh, professional life, all, most of my adult life I've been a teacher. And um, like I said, it is not my life has not taken the direction that I had planned for it. Mm -hmm. um, so I was trying to pursue studies in medicine. Mm -hmm. But every opening I got was a teaching job. Every job, I mean, I, I, I couldn't, I, I had to work and study. Mm -hmm. And I, I, every job I got somehow was a teaching job. So I stayed in teaching for 25 years in the classroom. And um, what I found was that a lot of students would come to me, even though I've taught at schools that had resident psychologists, you know, and big psychology blocks, you know, buildings with nice cushy offices. They would walk past those offices mm -hmm. and come to my room um, seeking help with, with psychosocial issues and challenges that they were having. And so an opportunity came up for me to study psychology, which I did. Mm -hmm. And um, at that point, I was living abroad, and I'm reading in the online edition of the newspapers where every day there's a suicide, and every day there's that, that kind of, and I thought to myself, you know, Canada needs this help. Definitely. And so, uh, that is how Solutions was born, actually. Mm. So, I came back here, I set up the service, and um, as the rest, as they say, is history. We um, right, so um, our offices are located mm. in Danrad Street, Newtown Kitty, and um, we operate by appointment only, and so persons wishing to uh, set up an appointment can go to our Facebook page and do it there, or they can, uh, if I can give the number here, mm -hmm. um, you can just send a WhatsApp message to 643 mm -hmm. 2979. 643 2979, and someone there will assist you in setting up an appointment and uh, we'll take it from there. That's actually really good information because I feel like. Counseling is so taboo in this society that even the people who need it and they want to get it, they don't know how to access it. Because there are services available, it's just that it's not talked about enough. Mm -hmm. So a lot of people don't know, okay, I need therapy or I need counseling, but how do I how do I get it? You know, one of the things one of the things that I'm grateful to the, the, the COVID pandemic for mm. is 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 the fact that it has it that it has forced a lot of us mm -hmm. to confront our mental health challenges mm -hmm. because it's easy to uh, hide behind work and hide behind your social life when you're experiencing mental issues. Um, you can ignore that when you're, you're in a crowd and you have, you're making jokes with everybody mm -hmm. and, and that's fine. But when you, when, if when you have to stay home, you have to listen to those voices in your head. And that, I believe, forced a lot of people to confront the fact that, you know what, I, I do need to talk to someone. Mm -hmm. So what we found is that during COVID and, and after that, since then, there, there, more persons have been accessing these services. And one of the things that I'm grateful for is that more men mm -hmm. are accessing the service because there was a time where if I had uh, 50 clients in a year, mm -hmm. um, one would, you know, 49 would be women. Huh. Now we have more men walking in and saying, look, uh, you know, usually when a man comes in for, for therapy or for counseling, it's because a woman has given him an ultimatum, <laughs> you know, Listen, either you go and see somebody or we're done, you know, something like that. So um, that is changing. It's not changing as fast as we would like to. We still have a lot of men in particular who are saying, you know, Minga, won't, nobody, nobody can't mm. tell me how to live kind mm. of thing. But um your counseling and therapy is not just for people experiencing mental illness. I mean, mm -hmm. you don't want to wait until you're mental, un, un, until you have an illness, to go see a counselor. Just like you don't wait until your car uh, exactly. leaves you on the side mm -hmm. of the road to, to, to take care to get to get a service. So uh, similarly, it is important for us to take care of our mental health. Um, just, uh, I was about to say, just like we take care of our physical health but we don't even <laughs> we men don't even take care of that well, very well so that's true we, we have to be different on all fronts mm -hmm. thank you so much for that so the next question is to the entire panel so the team for international mental sorry the team for international men's day is zero male suicide what does this theme mean to you 
and how can we provide immediate support and facilitate timely interventions to potentially decrease the rate of male suicides? So, up here. I see everybody looking at me. <laughs> <laughs> you, 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 you started the topic <laughs> on, on that note. Yes. All right. So you said at the, at the start that we need more uh, forums like these mm -hmm. where men sit together and talk, I mean, and, and men listen to men, mm -hmm. you know, and we need to make it safe, I believe, for men to come out and talk about what they are really feeling. Mm -hmm. um, we need to create those safe spaces. And, and typically, when, when, you know, women are really good at doing this. That's women do this all the time. Really? They, you know, they, they do it over coffee, they do it in, in the homes, mm -hmm. they sit down and they talk about what they're really feeling. We men don't do that. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that we have learned to do is to make it uncomfortable for other men to come to us and talk mm -hmm. about that and we need to change that mm -hmm. um, so I, I think that the, in order for us to get to uh, that goal that very ambitious goal of zero male suicide we have to first start making it safe for men to talk about the things that bother them yep. and for men to be able to express emotionally and, and, and and, and to acknowledge that I have a problem because we're, not, we're supposed to be problem solvers as we said oh, yeah. at the start mm -hmm. so from, if I'm ad acknowledging that I have a problem I'm actually admitting that I'm unable to carry out a function that society expects me to, to, which to carry out make you feel weak. And, and which makes me feel like less mm -hmm. of a man but um, I think it is important for us men to mm -hmm. understand that seeking help is really a strength because it takes humility to acknowledge to myself that I have a problem mm -hmm. that I can't handle on my own. Yeah, definitely. What about you too? Yeah. Um, we spoke about all the expectation and the issues that facing men, and we, we're now speaking about uh, zero suicide among men. And what it means to me basically is for us examining the issues that men face mm -hmm. and legitimizing them mm -hmm. because we have not come to a place saying um, talking about oh um, these issues are truly real to an individual mm -hmm. when we, we hear women talk about their stresses and so forth yes that's legitimate mm -hmm. but when men talk about when they do talk about it, it's like, man, you man need to get over that. And how do we do that? We need to go back to the, some of the things in terms of the forums that we have. But we spoke about the village. Mm -hmm. There's so many, and us men need to recognize when our fellow man is not mm -hmm. in a space or a place that he, he needs to be in and try to have conversations mm -hmm. and be creative just as the women are Let, let's go out for a sit down and so forth and and we talk about all the things we talk about the sports and so forth and then we get to the real issues mm -hmm. what's really going on how are you feeling and really start having those conversation to make it a real norm that we talk men talk about the issues um, even in the home, um, having those discussion, um, it, it's very, um, men find it very difficult to sit down and talk to their wives, yeah. but you, you can talk to your wife, um, but um, some persons will call this mama's boy, <laughs> but one of the persons that is truly concerned for a child, and mostly um, boys, our mothers just have that go home, sit down, talk, and talk about anything, and talk about the core issues, and, and then men will become more comfortable talking about issues affecting them, and that they don't have to get to that, it doesn't get to that state where it's so compressing um, on them that it leads to that part. I, 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 um, I tend to tackle this in a different, uh, different way. In fact, I've been asked uh, by several young men to provide mentorship. <clears throat> and of course, this is planned, uh, but if you can do this on maybe uh, a structured way at some point, but only 12 persons at one time. Of course, it's free of charge. Uh, and we'll have a link with my, my friends here. So we, 
of about 12 persons and we'll talk about different things. We talk about um, not only suicide, but things like um, doing business together, doing all kinds of things so that the young men can be, can be nurtured mm -hmm. and, and uh, to be proper men in society. We talk about domestic violence, all those things. But of course, it wouldn't be me alone. It would be, I would be um, asking for support from, from our, our fr my friends and, and, and relatives to, to get this done. And, and in, that, in that third forum, we can raise things like the, uh, the importance of um, seeking, uh, seeking help, mm -hmm. uh, seeking funding, look at all those things. So it's, it's, it's something I'm, 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 I'm trying to, to coin at the moment. You know, your, your approach is, is brilliant and because one of, the, one of, the, fun, one of the, the foundational causes of mental health challenges is the lack of social support, Beautiful. the absence of that social support. So if, you know that there are people in your corner. If you know that there's somebody you can, can talk to, if you know that there's a number you can call, um, it, it, it helps to strengthen a person uh, mentally and emotionally. Oh, yeah. And we have, because we have moved towards this whole individualist approach to society where everybody is on their own, and yeah, you, you, because you grew up in the country, you would know there was a time you just show up at somebody's house and, oh, yes. and oh, yes. you know, next thing you're eating and you're sleeping yeah. over. <laughs> and, and you're sleeping there, you know. Yeah. Now you, you got a call ahead, oh, yes. Oh, yes. you know. And, and we've moved away from this thing where we were all one big family. And so the absence of that support, and, and then with the advent of social media, we feel a false sense of connection because. You know, every morning we get up, we, we, we chat with so many persons mm -hmm. and, and people like our pictures mm -hmm. and, and, and our posts and so on. And somehow on the surface, we feel like we're connected to people. But, but in not, real life, we're, we're lonely. We're not. You know? That is true. In, in, in reality, we're lonely and, and we don't feel like we have anyone we can turn to. Mm -hmm. And that, you know, takes a really heavy yeah. toll on, on, on our sense of self and our, our mental well-being. And that and then, is... Oh, sorry, sorry to touch on this... Um, in fact, on the countryside, uh, if you see a youngster misbehaving and the person giving a two or a couple slaps, you dare not go home and tell the <laughs> parents <laughs> because it was the way of, of, of keeping us in track. It, 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 it was it was the village the cooperating, village cooperating to raise yeah. the child. Now, I'm, yeah. I'm, I know both you and I we we are not into the whole slap thing, but the 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 the, 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 the principle behind the thing is that everyone was involved in helping everyone yes. else. Yeah. You see, uh, Sean, you were going to say something? No, I was just saying uh, there's an African word uh, says I think it's Ubuntu. 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 Mm -hmm. uh, or Ubuntu. It says, um, what's it for again? Me, for you, for me, for, for you, us. For me, for us. Right? So okay. that's, that's something, because, as I said, I keep saying I've not arrived, but I've given a lot. But, mm -hmm. And I would like to share this with, with those youngsters coming up. So. Mm -hmm. Somebody, you need to benefit from those. Yeah, go ahead. You're talking to no, I was basically <laughs> just going to reiterate the, mm -hmm. the point that he made mm -hmm. that um, we get likes and pictures, we interact with each other on social media, but we are lonely indeed because mm -hmm. I know there will be situations where you talk to somebody and the conversation goes so well online, but then you meet them in person and say, <laughs> I it's thought it's we like were. strangers, yes. Yeah, I thought yes. we were good. Yeah. What happened? All right. So, so that, that online interaction mm -hmm. gives you kind of a false sense mm -hmm. of connection yeah. when you're really not connected. Okay. Mm -hmm. right, right. Yeah. Yeah. I would just like to add to the topic in terms of zero suicide for men and stuff. And we started off on what it means to me. And I, I often try to <clears throat> create this analogy where everything in society, we talk about this balance. And the, the thing that represents balance is a skill. Mm -hmm. And whether male, female, we, we need to create that skill and keep that thing balanced. Mm -hmm. As we address women issues and we, we target resources towards female issues, we as much target resources to male issues in, 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 the, school, in the schools and in the various institutions so that you can always have that balance because once that balance is out of shift mm -hmm. it affects mm -hmm. the entire society yeah. mm -hmm. and that is continues on the, the ripple effect in in so many areas that's my additive there good well with that we've come to the last question 
and I must say I'm really grateful for this discussion because like we mentioned before, these aren't things that we talk about every day. Men don't usually sit down and have these kinds of discussions and I think that people looking at this, they will be able to benefit from it because some of the things that we touched on may be things that people are dealing with, maybe things that they can, be, they can relate to. So I think this was a very fruitful discussion and with that I'd like to thank each and every one of you here for joining in this discussion and for sharing your views and your thoughts. Um, I'd also like to thank you for joining our diverse and fruitful discussion. Follow us on Facebook and on Instagram at Rotary Club of Starbrook, as well as our partners at the Rotary Club of Georgetown, Rotary Club of Starbrook, and Solutions Training and Counseling Services. Thank you for joining. Thank you.